You have probably been told to master the pen tool in Photoshop a thousand times and you might already be good at it. However, it never hurts to brush up on this crucial skill, so allow me to share with you the secrets of true pen tool mastery. So the first question is whether you still need to learn to work with the pen tool in Photoshop or not. And it is a good question because there's so many cool new tools like the object selection tool with which you literally just have to make a selection like this and it will snap onto the object. It uses the Adobe Sensei artificial intelligence technology and identifies what you make a selection of. And if I just redo this selection and maybe stay closer to this part here, it should also again find even that edge there, which was a little bit more tricky to identify. This is obviously a great selection. And if I turn this into a mask by clicking on the little Japanese flag here on the bottom right, you can see it actually does a really good job. So it creates a good outline. However, this is still not as perfect and clear as what you would be able to create with the pen tool. If I Alt or Option click on the mask, we can see that the edge is still hazy and as I said, it's not as clear as what you can achieve with the pen tool. So I would say the pen tool is still the best tool when it comes to making selections of objects with hard edges, but there's so much more that you can do with the pen tool in Photoshop. So in this video, I am going to walk you through all of that, but let's first start with the settings. So when you select the pen tool by pressing P on the keyboard, you will get a couple of options here in the little cogwheel. The first one is the color of the path. Now, when you work on images like this, the red outline is not going to help you. So I'll just show you if I start painting with this, you can't really see what you're doing. So in these cases, it's worth changing the color here. There's a couple of options you can choose from, like the default cyan color, blue color is quite nice, but you also have the option to change the thickness. There's not that many options here, but we can switch all the way up to three pixels or zero and a half pixels, which is going to be very thin. Another very useful option you will find here is called rubber band. Now, if you turn this off, you will be able to only see the next path segment that you're drawing when you actually let the mouse go. So once you click, it will appear. And the same thing with the curves. If I click and drag, I will only see it appearing once I actually clicked. So when I move my cursor around, nothing is going to appear. However, if I go back and turn on rubber band, so it's now enabled, I can see the next curve segment even before placing it down. So even before defining the next anchor point. So now if I just click here, you can see the same thing happens there as well. So it gives me a preview even before committing to the next anchor point. And last but not least, there's also another very important setting I highly recommend to change. This you will find in the preferences. So if you go there on the cursors, you will be able to change to precise cursors for the other cursors. So this will apply to a couple of tools like the eyedropper, but more importantly to the pen tool, because by default, if you use it as standard, you will actually see the pen tool. And I don't really like that. I actually prefer this option. So if we come back and choose precise, now we just have a little crosshair, which is much more subtle and it doesn't get in the way. If you have the standard cursor option selected, you can also use a shortcut, the caps lock with which you can temporarily turn on the precise mode and you can continue drawing with that. And then when you press caps lock again, you go back to the default version. Now let's go through a couple of very useful shortcuts. I would recommend to learn these at the beginning and really practice them until they become second nature. So if I come closer here, I can show you when you first obviously start your path, you just simply click. Then the next thing, if you want to draw it completely straight, you can just click. Or if you want to add a curve, like on this side, you can click and drag to create the curve. And if you're not happy with the placement of your next anchor point, you can hold down the space bar and drag it around. So I can drag it all the way here and then continue drawing it when I let the space bar go. Now, when you create curves instead of straight lines with the pen tool, you will end up having symmetrical handle points. These 
can be very useful to make sure that your next curve segment is going to be continuous. Like here you can see it is going to be a nice smooth transition between the previous segment and the new one. But if you want to have a completely different curve and maybe you want to define a corner point there, you can hold down the alter option key and click on that last point. That way I can create an independent curve like this. And again, the same thing here, Alt click there, I can create a new one and define that point. But then when I move further, like here, I would probably want to keep it nice and smooth. So I'm just going to click and drag to define this section. And then if I want to just refine my handle points, I can hold down the control or command key and drag this around until I'm happy with its fitting. Let's just adjust that a little bit further as well. Now I'm going to change the color maybe to yellow. I think that's going to stand out more. And we can already see if I come back here that we managed to cover quite a lot already. So we already seen a couple of shortcuts, but there's other things you can also achieve with them. If you again, hold down the Alt or Option key and go back to any of these points and click on them, they can be turned back into a corner point. So an already existing smooth point can become a corner point and vice versa as well. So if you have a corner po point like this and alt click and drag on it, you can create a new smooth point. You can also split direction handles. When you hold down alt or option key again, you can have completely independent segments that were originally connected to each other. So before splitting them, if I come back with the command or control key, they will move together. Once again, instead of using the command or control key, if you use option or alt key, you can split and adjust individually only one side of your smooth points. The shift key can also be sometimes useful with which you can draw completely straight lines horizontally or vertically. So holding down the shift key will constrain to these 90 degrees angles, but it can also do 45 degree angles. So these are diagonal lines. And the command or control key, remember, can be used to reposition any of these points at any time, but it can also be used to start a new path. So if you hold down command control and click somewhere, then you don't have to switch to a different tool. You can just start drawing a completely new path. So again, command control click and then start drawing a new path. And if I want, I can later on connect these to each other and then it becomes a single path. When you select a path, you can quickly delete it by pressing backspace or delete. And if you only want to remove an anchor point from an existing path, you have to make sure that you are in the drawing mode. So you go back and continue drawing that path and then hover over whichever anchor point you want to remove and just simply click on it. So this way I can remove these, but still keep the last anchor point here on the right. Now for this to work, you have to make sure the auto add delete option here in the control bar is turned on. You can decide to turn this off if you don't want to accidentally remove anchor points, but when it's turned on, it can also be used to add new anchor points on the path or along the path. So simply go close and when you see the plus sign, click, will add that anchor point and it will automatically come with direction handles. So if I use again, command or control, click and drag, you can see the handles already there. So let's try this again here. I'm going to click and then command control, drag it out. Don't forget if you want to turn these into corner points, all you have to do is to hold down alt or option key and click on them again. Now, if you want to quickly delete multiple anchor points, but still preserve parts of the path, you should use the direct selection tool. That's the white arrow tool here. Once that's selected, just mark all those anchor points that you wish to delete and then press backspace or delete. Now, in this case, I only wanted to delete these and still keep that one, which was following the outline of the trainers. And this way I can still keep the rest of the path and only delete the unnecessary anchor points. So now that you've seen how I use the pen tool, let me speed things up a bit and I'm going to make a selection of this trainer and then we will see how it can be turned into a vector mask.
Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe certified online training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. Okay, so now that we have the whole path, we can turn this into a vector mask. And the quickest way of doing it is by making sure first that you have the right layer selected and then holding down the command or control key and clicking on the mask icon here at the bottom. So then you should be able to see your selection. And you will see the mask icon appearing here in the layers panel. And if you hold down shift key when clicking on this thumbnail, you can disable temporarily the mask or turning it back on. Let me just change the background color so we can see both the outline of the mask and the background. So when we zoom closer, you can see how nice and sharp these edges are. But notice that there's a couple of mistakes like here. It's not perfect. Now, this is another reason why I love working with vector masks and the pen tool, because I can come back to the mask itself and use the direct selection tool, the wide arrow, with which I can come closer and make the changes to the selection. Now, in these cases, I prefer to keep the thickness as low as possible, so 0.5 pixels, zoom really close, and then make the adjustments. So now I can come here and adjust the handle, refine that edge, and then do the same thing here. I can drag this down and move it closer, something like that. And then also this one can come down a bit and so on and so forth. You can even use the arrow keys on the keyboard to push these points around. And you can even select multiple anchor points. Like in this case, let's say select these three. And then I can use up and down, left and right arrows to move it around at the same time. That can save you a lot of time as well. Now, if you don't want to end up carving into the object and taking away too much from it, you can also use an additional layer. So just create a new layer on top of this and create a clipping mask by clicking between the two, holding down Alt or Option key. And then on this new layer, you can sample a color from the detail close to the edge that you would like to refine. So I'm going to hold down Alt or Option key while using the brush tool click somewhere here and then maybe just increase the brush size and change the hardness to 0%. So it will become a very soft brush and then just simply paint over the edges here. Now this is going to completely override the details. So you are losing some of the texture there. But if you change the blend mode of this layer to color, then it's not going to remove the texture. It's just simply going to remove those colors, the red color or tint in this case. That was originally from the background. So if I do this quickly, you can see now before and after. You don't always have to do this coloring, of course, because most of the time you can just go back to your mask, the path that you have in the vector mask, and then using the direct selection tool, like I've done before, I can use either the shortcuts or just simply adjust these paths and curves until they get in the right place. So the pen tool and the vector mask together is still the best method for creating selections non-destructively on objects, especially when it comes to hard edges. Now, when objects have a lot of curves on them, you might want to consider trying the curvature tool. So here we have another image. I'm going to zoom a little bit closer. And instead of using the pen tool, now I'm going to switch to the curvature pen tool. So this is like an alternative for the pen tool. And with this, instead of click and dragging, whenever you click, it will automatically create curves. So that's quite useful, especially when it comes to these curvy objects. So let me just start this zoom a little bit closer and start from here. So if I just simply click there, then the next point I define here, then the next point there, you see it actually does a really good job. You still have to have a sense of where you should place down the anchor points, but that's something that you will get used to quite quickly. And if I come down further here and create a straight line, 
and then another point maybe somewhere around here then I can go further and maybe get all the way to this point here now when I zoom out you can see it actually did a really good job but if I want to refine details here all I have to do is to hold down the control or command key and move these anchor points around so I don't even have to deal with the direction handles in this case I can just move these points around easily and of course I can always come back and add additional points if I feel like I didn't fit the path perfectly like here again I can play around with this point and then maybe just add an additional point here just to make the path fit much better if you double click on an existing anchor point it will turn it into a sharp corner and when you double click again it turns it back into a smooth point so like here I can double click that creates a sharp corner and then I can just click and drag this down to fit it onto the object so honestly, I highly recommend to use the curvature tool when you have objects like this where almost everything is curvy and there are hardly any straight lines. And if you're still not convinced about the curvature tool, let me show you one last thing. I'm just going to continue this part here. You can see it's a very bad fit at the moment, but if I hold down the command or control key, instead of clicking on an anchor point, I can just drag the path itself. So that way I can fit it onto the shape that I need without messing around with the direction handles or the anchor points. Now, of course, you can always start using the curvature tool and then halfway through, you can switch to the pen tool and vice versa. So they can be combined. And for this, it's worth changing their shortcut. So I would normally have shift P assigned to the freeform pen tool. And that way I can very quickly switch and work with the two tools at the same time. Now, since we drew half of this selection and because it is a symmetrical object, we will be able to create the symmetry by simply just duplicating this path. This is also a big time saver when it comes to these symmetrical objects. So all you have to do is to use the path selection tool and holding down Alt or Option key, you can make a duplicate very quickly. Just simply drag it. Then use the free transform tool Control or Command T and go to the W value here in the control bar and put a minus before the value inside that block and then press enter and you might need to press it twice to make sure it's accepted. Now we very quickly flipped these details around and I can move it close here on the right side and if I zoom closer I can align it to it using the arrows on the keyboard and then if I want to join these two paths together I can use the pen tool once again maybe this time just simply clicking here and there and then I can refine them further but now it's a single path now of course when it comes to having lots of anchor points next to each other it's a good idea to remove some and simplify your path because less anchor points usually the easier it is to make changes so I'm just going to use command key and adjust this curve here on the top now it's also important to learn how to combine multiple parts together into a single vector mask so as you can see here I already created the mask for the outline so the silhouette is there but we still need to get rid of these hollow details so let's just start here on the top what I'm going to do is to select the mask, then I press P on the keyboard to get the pen tool. And here on the top, I'm going to switch to subtract front shape. So this is a different drawing mode. You just have to make sure you don't accidentally have the original path selected. Just simply have the mask itself selected, but not the path. Because otherwise, this path operation change is going to affect the visibility of details but if I now come here and I'm going to just draw these sections I can already see the changes that I'm doing as I'm going over it so I can just quickly close it up and then maybe just refine a few points until it gets in the right place so once again I will just draw another one here just so you can see that we can have as many parts as we want within the same vector mask so let me just put that up there and then come down. I'm not going to be too precise here. I just want to quickly cut that detail out. And essentially this is all you would have to do. But the best thing is that whenever you come back to the vector mask, you can individually refine these parts. 
So they are all combined into the same mask, but you can access them separately and you can even change their path operation at any time. In Illustrator, we would normally call something like this as a compound path. And so far we've seen examples of the pen tool used for making selections and extracting details from their background, but it can also be used for so many other things. Let me just give you an example. If I want to add shading, for example, on a certain detail, I can use the pen tool to make that edge that I require. So in this case, maybe I want to add some shading here at the bottom. So I'm going to just select this detail. And since I already have the outline, I don't have to do the whole silhouette. I will just close it in like this and then turn this path into a selection quickly by pressing Command or Control Enter. Then on a new layer, which is again going to be clipped onto this original image, I am going to use a larger brush and maybe a darker red color, something like that, with which I can start painting over here around the edge and I can create that shading. If it's too much, I can always reduce the opacity, set it up to whatever I prefer. And if I want to keep using this selection, I can just quickly turn it into a mask by clicking on the mask icon here. So whenever I want to come back, I can just select the layer thumbnail and continue painting within those boundaries that I created. And of course, there's so much more you can do with the pen tool. You can draw lines, you can draw shapes, even dash lines, which I'm just going to show you quickly again using pen tool. For this, I'm going to switch to shape and I will just use a stroke, maybe set this to red and then change here in the stroke options to dashed or dotted line. You can decide which one you prefer. And you can, of course, even make additional changes if you go into the more options. But I'm just going to stick to this default setting. And then if I draw something, you will see it is actually a dashed line, which could be a perfect way to add additional stitching details on this trainer, for example. And just like paths saved into a vector mask, the good thing about using the pen tool with shapes is that you can always come back, make adjustments and use all the previous shortcuts that we've learned about. So everything is completely non-destructive and that's the way you should always aim to work in Photoshop. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.